Hey, welcome back to another VR in Godot. I wanted to do a quick update video on a little bit of progress I've made. Um, so for now, I've kind of uh, <laughs> punted and done this little uh, capsule for a bad guy. I did get that uh, low poly pack from um, Humble Bundle, so I thought maybe I'll try and replace it with that down the road. But uh, for now, this is this will get me moving. So. Uh, one thing I did is I added a little red thing for the face, and I plan to uh, change that maybe based on the uh, attack status, whether they're attacking you or <clears throat> sitting idle, or frozen, I should say. Um, so, let's look at what I've done. So, I, I, obviously I made this. I made it in a separate scene, and I used a kinematic body. It's got a collision shape of a capsule, which I need to adjust. Uh, it's actually probably fine. Uh, and then the body and face are using the CSG cylinder objects. And yep, both of them are cylinders. And then I've got this 3D label. And so that, <laughs> that I actually wanted to show off probably more than anything. That took me a minute, but uh, I was happy I added it because it lets me see visually some status of how my entities are going in 3D. So let's look at that. Um, it's implemented in a separate scene here so you can just drag it in and uh, the way I made this is I, I did a quick Google on how to do this and they suggested you look at the example so I looked at the example project and if you load up a new instance of Godot there's this project list here but there's also these templates. These are templates of things that other people have done that are out on the internet that you can download and try. And so I looked for GUI, I think it was. Maybe it was 3D. Well, here it is. Uh, and so all you do is you click, and then you say download, and then you have to install it, and you give it a folder, and it puts it on your project list. And so now if I looked through here, uh, I don't see it, but I could import it, and then browse, GUI in 3D, open. Uh, and so now this one is pointing at that. So I already had this open, so let's not do that again. Uh, here it is. So uh, in 3D, you see here's the main scene. And they've got a little camera right here. And I think it follows a path, which I'm not sure how they did that. I didn't look. Uh, but you can tell this thing right here is a little GUI panel. And if I play this, you can see it's a 3D object and it's moving around, but I can still interact with it. Pick items, run these sliders, even type in the text box, click buttons. I see the label. So this was exactly what I wanted to do, but I just needed the label. So let's look at how they did it. So they've got a 3D object, which is just a spatial node. <clears throat> uh, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong spot. This is the thing we're interested in. This is the scene altogether here, and here's some. Here's the walls and the background and the these two cubes over here. Um, ah, this animation is how they're moving it. This is how they're moving the camera. So they've got the camera and they've got a transition and they've just got a few points set over time. Here over six seconds they translate to a few different positions and then probably uh, um, does it around in circles. Anyways, so here's the, uh, the GUI panel. So this is just the panel part. They've got the GUI panel, they've got a script on it, we'll take a look at that. They've got a viewport. A viewport is a way to um, separate out, so like everything under this viewport would be a whole nother scene, like another world, and you can only see it through this viewport. So under that viewport they just have the GUI, uh, they have a GUI which is a control, and then they have in their case a panel and then all those buttons and labels and stuff that we see here. Um, and then they've got this quad down here and we'll take a look at that and underneath that it's got an area and a collision shape and the area and the collision shape are for the mouse uh, pointer control so when I click on the button this collision shape and area are what's capturing that click and so I would assume that that's a really tight yeah see it's a pretty skinny little box right there that should be pretty close to um, the quad underneath it that you visually see. 
All right, so let's take a look at this. This is the interesting part. So this is just a mesh that's a quad. So if you come down here and you said new quad mesh, that's how you would create this. And they've just got it set up and it's three wide and two high. That's pretty basic. But here's the magic. Under the material, if you look at this, you can kind of see the the uh, the GUI right there wrapped around this sphere. And so the key things here is under the albedo, which is the color, uh, they've got this texture and they've you can say, see the viewport right there. And so there's this one called New Viewport Texture. And if you click that, it asks you for a viewport node. And so they selected this one. And that's what points uh, that viewport to render onto this quad. All right. So a couple things I had to do, I had to, do to get this to work. Uh, down here under Resource, and this is back on my quad, I had to set local to scene on that was that was important because the viewport would not select um, if I didn't do that I don't think I had to change anything under here I think this was all already set fine um, and the things that you wanted up here I think I pretty much did the same settings on mine in th this case I don't think this one matters as much for them but in my case I didn't want the gray background and so that was important. Uh, and then unshaded just means that uh, the light won't affect it. So let's look at the script super quick. And uh, I scanned down through here and almost all of this looked like it had to pertain with, uh, you know, mouse events, mouse positions, uh, the input event, uh, finding the mouse, distance to things. So all this was pretty much related to clicking on that GUI. And in my case, I don't want to do that. I just want to have a label up above, floating up above in 3D over the player. So I didn't need any of this. So let's go look at how I implemented it. Uh, don't save, don't save. So what I did is I created a, a 3D spatial object, created a viewport with just a control and a label, and it just says attack. And then I did scale that up uh, I scaled it up a little bit so that it would be large enough to fill the box, but I probably, yeah, that was just an adjustment that you can make. Uh, I did make, on the viewport, I did set transparent background on, and without that, you see the gray background. I just thought it looked better without it. Uh, and then for the quad instance, same thing, I created a material. I set the, the transparent background, again, you see the background, and in this case it's black because uh, of the material and not necessarily because of the background of the control. Now if I went over here and I changed this to background too, then you'd see that gray because that would be overriding it. Um, I'm sorry if that doesn't make sense, but basically uh, this is the texture, right? And because there's no data there, it's just setting it to black. And this one is the viewport, and so that's the background of the viewport. So anyways, with th both of those transparent backgrounds on, you can see through everything except the letters. So that's perfect. The unshaded, we'll take a look at how this looks. So let's play this. Now this is in VR, so I'm going to have to juggle my headset with the um, with this. But So unshaded means you can see it without light. So that's why I can see that without the light, right? But um, that's what unshaded means. Now let's turn it off and then turn unshaded on or off. And now we'll see the same scene. Now I can still see the letters if I shine the light at it, but if the light's not on it, I can't see it. See the difference there? So that's what uh, unshaded means in 3D. All right, so... Uh, the only thing else I did is I did add a script, but my script is just so I can set the text. So I've got this um, global level, or not global level, but you know, I've got this property of my 3D label object, and it's called text3D, and I just set it to hello by default. And then this in Godot is the setter and getter. So these are functions that get called to set the value of this property um, whenever you call it from external. 
And the reason I do that is because I'm actually going in and setting and getting the value from that control label down here. So this is just a nice shortcut so that um, my angel script, which we'll look at how I use this, doesn't have to know about the innards of this um, 3D label node. And I could do other things like I could change the color or do anything else that I wanted to do, not just a one-liner, but I could do a whole function worth of, of code right here. <clears throat> all right, so popping back to the angel. So all I had to do is I just dragged it in, you know, like this. Bloop. There's my new text. And then I positioned it. So in my case, I drag, dragged it up, but you could put it wherever you wanted. And you could even rotate it. Whatever you wanted to do. Now, this is, yeah, that's one thing to note. It only You can only see it from the front. You can't see it from the back. So you would have to... Um, probably add a second one to the back. There may be another way to do that, but um, yeah. So you can only see it from the front. That's good. important to know. And then it doesn't turn to look at the player. That That's called a billboard. This is an actual 3D object that's attached to this um, angel. So it'll turn with the angel. Uh, and then, let's see. Right, so to text change the text in the angel script uh, we'll look at more in a second but this is all you have to do right here I access that 3d label and then I access the text 3d property which is that one that we created right here this property and I set its value to a string so I'm just setting it to idle alright so that's <clears throat> that's all there was to the 3d object thing now let's look at the angel and uh, so what I've got this is I just kind of documented up here how I want the angel to behave so that down here when I'm coding it I can kind of reference this. So I want the angel to have two states, an idle state and an attack state and when they're in the idle state when they can't see the player but when they're, and they're in the attack state when they can see the player. And the difference is when they're in idle for now I'm just gonna have them stand still but you know you could do something else like they kind of roam around or uh, they could turn, whatever. Um, but if they see the player, they're going to move into the attack state. Then when they're in the attack state, if they're near enough to the player, the player is going to lose the game. Um, if the player looks at the angel while in the attack state, they freeze. And I may change this to be if they point the flashlight at the angel and not just if they're looking at him. Um, but we'll, we'll decide that a little bit later. And then uh, they're going to move at the player while not in attack. I mean, while in attack and not frozen. And so the freeze is going to be based on if you're looking at them or not. And then if they s no longer see the player, I want them to return back to the idle state. So if you go around a corner, you know, and so the idea would be you would look at them and you'd sneak away, you'd sneak your way around a corner while they're frozen, and then as soon as they're out of sight, they stay where they're at and they don't try and chase you around the corner. Now we're not going to add any intelligence to them to where they would navigate the 3D scene here, because they really don't need it. Um, one thing we could, you know, because we're going to the ultimate goal. I'm going to probably have one here, one in here. Um, and that's probably it for this map. So the idea would be, you know, as you're coming down this hallway here, you'd want to keep your eye on them and then navigate down here and that'll keep them uh, trapped up here. Or if you accidentally come around this way and you see them and you see the dead end, then you know, oh, I need to turn around and get away. And you don't want them chasing you uh, through the map. So, um, yeah, there's really no need for them to have any navigation. We could make a, add navigation in case you kind of lure them down here. So if I lured this guy down here, now I really don't have a way to get through here. I want him to, when he goes back into his idle state, I want him to return to his original position. We could do that. Um, we'll look at that. That may be a thing, because that may be frustrating uh, if he comes down here and then you get stuck and you can't can't get through. So we'll look at that. Anyways, um, I'll make a note of that. That may be something worth uh, to 
return to original position. All right, so that way I don't forget. All right, so that's where I'm at now. I, the, uh, he does not move yet, um, and that will be a little tricky because, uh, well, the first thing I want to do is I want to make him look at the player when he enters the attack state, so that's actually something worth documenting. So, looks at player. And then uh, the second thing would be moving towards the player, right? And then the third thing would be uh, doing the freeze. So when the flashlight is on the angel, then he needs to freeze, which I'm going to change the color of this face to like a blue, and he'll stand still. And then when your flashlight goes off, it'll turn red, and he'll start coming towards you. And so that's the next step. All right, I hope this was uh, entertaining, and we'll see you soon.